Hey everyone, to celebrate 100k, I've put together the basics to an edit. Here's what you're about to learn. 20 more bands, this bitch, I'll be stacking up the brass footsteps to the mat, cause I'm wearing no black, no sleep, no peace, I'm in insomnia, but the bullet to the head. Quick disclaimer, I won't be covering Velocity, Twixter, or Scene Selection. I'll have a project file in the description if you would like to follow along. I've broken the video into five parts, the timestamps will be on the screen, and you will need Sapphire plugin and Magic Bullet Looks. Alright, let's get started. So first effect is shake. So assuming you have your clips ready, go to this search bar, type in shake, S underscore shake, just drag the default on, uh, ignore my preset. And now we're going to copy these settings. So set amplitude to 3.68. And what amplitude does is changes how much it shakes, like the distance it shakes. Frequency is how fast it shakes, so set that to 2.7. Phase, I'm not entirely sure, but put to negative 0.7. Now you may need to pause to copy these settings. X, shake. Y, shake. Ignore Z, shake. Go to tilt, shake. And finally channels and you can get creative with this what this does is change the colors that are present like so okay so now that you've got that go up to amplitude hit this little animate watch icon timeline skip six frames one two three four five six and set this to point two nine and now go to the end of the clip and do 0.19, like so. Go to your first keyframe, which are these little circles, right click, fast. And what this does is this line here is the path it takes from this keyframe to the next. You can leave this at linear, which is default, but you can also change to whatever you want and that slightly changes. But we're just gonna leave it at linear. So now, drag the default on again, but this time we're going to copy these settings. Amplitude to 0.7, frequency to 3. Motion blur unticked. X shake. Y shake. Tilt shake. And that's your shakes done. Okay, so our next effect is blurs, so go to the search bar, type in linear, linear blur, hit, drag the default on, amount, hit animate, just bring this up, one, two, three, four, five, hit this little button down here, make this a little clearer, this little button here, green plus, and now go back here, put in about 270 and that's the wrong direction so go up to angle and just hit 90 so now it's vertical first keyframe fast fade now just for convenience we're going to right click our clip copy hit D twice and highlight every every clip but the one we just did DD again right click selectively paste event attributes video event effects and effect keyframes click that and hit ok so now we have just put that effect on every single clip but we're still gonna have to do the blurs on the end of the clips like so but it is hard to paste it all because they're not all the same length so we'll go to the end, one, two, three, four, add a keyframe, and go to maybe 200, and hit slow fade. So that way it transitions nicely. And you want to do that for every clip. So if we go to the next clip, one, two, three, four, add a keyframe, and about 200. 
And in the middle, just because there's a beat here where this little triangle is, we are going to go back, add a keyframe. This time we'll do three on either end. So one, two, three, add a keyframe. One, two, three, add a keyframe. And we'll go to about maybe 200. And we'll put this one on slow fade and this one on fast fade. So now there's an almost shake effect in the middle. So next effect we'll be doing is zoom. So go to the search bar, type in blow my curves. Just drag the default up. And we're gonna change a few settings. So go down to wrap X and wrap Y and set them both to reflect. This just add reflection lines for when you zoom out. It makes it much nicer. Stutter duration, put that down a bit. And what started duration is, is motion blur. And since we've already got linear blur on, we don't need motion blur. Or we don't need as much motion blur. So then go to Zdist, animate that, and brightness. And we'll do brightness first because it's nice and easy. Go to the start of the clip and go out four frames. One, two, three, four. Add a keyframe. Go back to the start and put this at about 3.2. And fast fade. We'll go to the middle clip and add a keyframe and then on each side we'll go three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Left one to slow fade, middle one to fast fade. And put this about two. That's much better. And then go to the end, go back four frames, one, two, three, four. Add a keyframe, slow fade. And this one may be a bit less, so maybe 1.8. And that's your brightness done. And now for Zetis, go to the start of the clip, go out four frames, one, two, three, four, add a keyframe, first one to fast fade. And because our first transition is a zoom in, we're gonna start by zooming out. So go to the first frame and do about 1.35. Next keyframe, put this in a little bit to 0.95, just so we don't see the reflection lines of the shape. Then go to the start of the brightness, add a keyframe, and the middle of the brightness, add a keyframe. Slow fade for the left one, and put this one as slow fade because we'll start doing the zoom out transition. Put this to 0.75 because we're gonna be doing a slight zoom in. Now go to the end of the clip, Add a keyframe, back four frames, one, two, three, four, add a keyframe, slow again, but since we're going to start zooming out, we'll put this to 0.8, and then we'll put the last keyframe to 1.5, and that's the first transition done. Go to your next clip, put the default on again, and I'd recommend you save the preset, so it's nice and convenient. Just do reflect, reflect, put start duration down a bit. Z dist and brightness again. But because last transition was a zoom out, we're gonna start by zooming in. So we'll go back four frames, one, two, three, four, add a keyframe, go back to the first one and put this at 0.3. Put this on fast fade. Put this on fast fade two. Go to the end of the clip, back four frames, one, two, three, four. Set this to 0.95 and set the end to 1.5 again. Slow fade. And I've forgotten to do this. Put this at 0.8. And this way it zooms out the whole time. We also need to do the brightness, so where you can see the other keyframes, put keyframes there. And go to the end and get creative. I'm gonna put both to two. It depends on how much brightness your clip already has. And fast fade. And now because I've shown you two zooms out, I will show you a zoom in. So first of all, I've just got 
a zoom out transition here, just like before. But instead, the only thing we're going to change is go to the end of the clip and simply 0.3. And that's about it. And on the other end, you just start off with a value higher than 1, so again, 1.35. And yeah, same thing. Okay, now that I've shown you zoom in and zoom out, I'm going to show you a slide and this can go in any direction, but for this instance, it's sliding to the right. So I've got the transition into the clip, but to transition out, I want to slide to the right. So shift X, animate that, bring this up a bit. And we're going to start our first keyframe, we're just going to drag it to the fourth, like here. Uh, put this on slow fade, add a keyframe, put this on slow fade too and put this one at negative 0.05 and go to the end and do negative 0.6 and go to the next clip and do the inverse so animate X one thing to do first before you put in the value is put this on fast fade because once it's on 0.6 it's actually past its like maximum and you can't actually see the keyframe anymore, so put this on fast fade first. One, two, three, four. Add another one. And go to the fourth last frame. Add a keyframe. Put this one to fast fade. And we're gonna do the opposite, so put this to positive 0 0.05. Like that. And positive 0.6. Because this is a slide to the right, the only thing we need to change with linear blur is from 90, put this to zero. So it's actually uh, horizontal and not vertical. So yeah, just put that at zero. And that's your slide transition. Now to make the edit a little bit more interesting, I've added a few one frame glitches and I've used very, very simple ones. And I'd recommend if you want to use them, watch another tutorial on how to get more adept ones. But essentially, we are going to click the clip we want it on, hold control and drag it above. So now you've got two of the same clip. Go to the start of the clip, one frame, split it and then delete. So you just want one frame up here and then go to search bar, invert, S underscore invert. And now you can get creative with this. Uh, I like to turn the saturation all the way down and then bring offset darks a little bit up and scale lights a little bit. I also like to use them to finish off a clip, so do the same thing, hold control, duplicate it, go to the end, delete the rest, move it across this time, and invert, get rid of the saturation, bring this down a little bit, bring this up a little bit, And that's one frame glitches. And now last but certainly not least, we're going to be doing the color correction. And for simplicity reasons, I'm just going to be putting it on the whole track. Uh, I'd highly recommend you put it on each individual clip though. That way you can get exactly what you want. Also, Magic Bullet Looks is very heavy, so I'd recommend you render the whole video and then put the CC on separately, okay? But we're going to go to search bar, just type in magic. Ignore all these other ones and ignore all my presets. Default onto the track so everything on the track will be affected. Go to edit. And so this will be the screen you're presented with. You've got your preview, you've got presets, and the first few are ones that I've downloaded, but there's tons of ones you can use if you say want this one. And then it shows you all these so you can learn from. What I'm gonna show you is a very generalized one. This should work for most clips, but not definitely all of them. So in subject, you want curves. Curves is almost always used. Drag this down and this up. You want a bit of an S, maybe a bit more, depending on how strong you want it. So a little curve like that. That's the typical shape you want. Then we'll go pop, and this just makes it stand out a little bit. Okay, next one I'm going to add is in matte, and it's diffusion, and it's just to add a little bit of a glow, but we don't want it quite that big, so, and you can toggle them off on and off here to see what it looks like. I think that looks alright. Lens, we're going to do edge soft, 
and this just does like a vignette of blur. So if you look closely, it just blurs it a little bit and that just puts your subject or the main thing into a bit more focus and you can change all the settings up here. And now the last one I'm going to be putting on is in post, it's this one, just put it there. And this essentially does RGB, so if you do it a lot, it does, it just warps the colors. But we don't want it that big, so maybe a bit here, and I want to like a greeny one. So you can get a little preview here, like that. I think that looks good. A few more effects that I'd recommend is in post ranged HSL. And essentially what this does is you can uh, change the saturation, hue and lightness of specific colors. So if I wanted blue very high or if I wanted no blue, I'd turn down blue and cyan and now there is no blue or cyan in the picture. Or if I wanted to change the color of Sonic to that color or whatnot. Also another one that I know Scout uses a lot, I think normally he animates this so he doesn't necessarily put it in um, magic bullet looks like this but it's film grain and this just adds you wouldn't guess it film grain I like to turn color off and it's just I don't know a little texture I've also just remembered that I need to add haze flare and this just does a little bit of a flare but I don't want it that bright I want it nice and subtle I think that's good for color correction. And that's it for today's tutorial. I really hope it helped, and if it did, I'll be doing loads more in the future, so stick around for them. Anyway, thanks for watching. See ya.